Hey YouTube, so today I want to talk about Inktober again. So welcome back to another Inktober video. Um, I know I, November's almost over and I'm still uploading these. I'm sorry, it's 100% my fault. I've just been a bit slacky and it's been hard to do stuff in my dorm room. Anyways, in this Inktober video, I want to talk about coming up with a new idea every day. Something that's very difficult for a lot of people, including me, I'm not saying this is something that is simple for me, but it's very hard to come up with something new to do every single day. Um, and coming up with something new is honestly something I think about every single day when I'm doing a challenge like this. I'm constantly thinking about what's next, what's next, what do I want to do next? and planning. Um, this was a lot easier with my um, Dog's Days of Summer project. If you want to watch those, they're all on my channel. Um, because I had a list of dogs that I wanted to draw and some of them were suggested to me. Um, and from this list, I was like, okay, I'll choose some. Whatever I was feeling a day, I'd be like, okay, cross that off the list. So I had a big list going. And then I'd cross stuff off. And then when it came to the final week, I had each day planned out of what I would draw and which dogs were in the running. Um, so yeah, that made it very easy for me. Um, Mermaid was very hard for me in that aspect. Coming up with something new to draw every day was so hard. <laughs> um, just because it was just a bunch of fish. Just a bunch of fish ladies. So hard. That one was not a fun challenge for me. But yeah, anyways, typically what I do is I try and think up something interesting. And this is something that I will do all day. Um, so, I think it was week two. The little girl, the girl with her hands pointing in a gun position on one foot. I had drawn a sketch earlier in the day that I really enjoyed. And that's what inspired that. And then there's another one in this one. There's Estelle, she's sitting kind of bow-legged on the floor, looking up, and that again was a sketch from earlier in the day um, that I kind of decided to make into a full piece. So that's kind of one way I kind of do it. Of course, um, if you've done previous years, there's ideas you can pull from those. I've got a perfect example right here in this week's. Um, we've got the outfit swap. So last year, if you watched... Um, my Inktober videos, um, you don't have to if you don't want to, it's kind of like a single video for each day and it just didn't work very well, but I did an outfit swatch for last week's, or last year's Inktober rather, where I had Mika wearing Roman's outfit, Roman wearing Mika's, no, Roman wearing Estelle's outfit, and Estelle wearing Mika's outfit, so... That's what I had. Um, I kind of realized I didn't color it. It was just a black and white, white ink of it um, when I looked back on it. But that was kind of my inspiration for that. I was like, eh, I don't. I remember not liking how I did Roman in that one. And Roman was the one thing that ruined the piece for me. So I was like, I want to redeem myself. Of course, doing um, a draw this again, I suppose, is definitely a great way to do an idea. Um, if it's something you've really been wanting to do, and it's something you just haven't been putting the time towards, this is the perfect time to do it. Especially since Inktober is just like so versatile. If you're not using a prompt list, it can be hard to come up with something new every day. Um, so this is specifically not prompts though, because I don't use them. Um, I have... One of my ideas in here, I did my two little um, cyber bunnies. I did um, Monomi and Zero the Third. Monomi is from Danganronpa. Zero the Third is from Zero Escape. Um, and of course, I had to do them. They have so many simul similarities. They're both bunnies. They're both like robots. They're both part of a killing game. Perfect. They go together so well. And I love them both. Um, so that was kind of the idea for that. It was a little goofy idea I wanted to execute. 
Um, I hadn't drawn Zero the Third before, I really had wa wanted to, and this was a good time to just get that out there. Um, uh, so, yeah, going off of that, I have two pieces of fan art that I'm looking at right now for this week, and that is a Zelda piece, and we have the Danganronpa Zero Escape piece. So, that is another route you can always go. Um, I'd say fan art is really a great idea to go with during Inktober. Um, gives you lots of ideas. Um, if you stick to a theme, that can help too. I know like some people do like monsters all throughout October, do different costumes. Um, I don't think Doodle Date, I don't think Stephanie, Steph from Doodle Date, I don't think she did Inktober this year, but I know she did Inktober in the past where she stuck to a theme and did that the whole month. So that can always be cool. Cat Volk also did this this year, though she was also using props. She did Cat Witches pretty much the whole month. So really that's kind of one thing I love, love, love about Inktober is that you can do whatever you want. Draw something you love every single day. That's one of the problems I had with Mermaid was that it was just so restrictive. Inktober is just so open and easy and nice. Um, and of course, kind of, there's been more stretching, I guess, of what's allowed. Because if you look at what the creator says are the rules for Inktober, it's supposed to be harsh contrast black and white ink. And there's people who use computer program do it digitally I don't think I'd ever do that just because I love my traditional work so <laughs> and I'm not very good at um, digital so there's that um, and people use of course I use color I love my color I can't I can't do without it I've, I did do some high contrast pieces but of course a lot of my pieces are very colored um, this year uh, I used pens, I used inks, I used dip pens, I used, I used, um, alcohol markers, I used, I don't know if I used my, like, blending markers, like my Copics or anything, but I did use Sharpies and Bic Mark, well, I don't even think it was Bic Markers. It was just one off-brand Sharpie thing that I used because I hadn't used them yet and I just got them right before Inktober and I'm like, you know what? I'm going to use them. I, I couldn't resist the temptation. So yeah, um, I really love pens. I have tons of pens. So of course, Inktober is my time of the year. Um, and it might not be yours and that's okay. Of course, it's optional to participate. But anyways, yeah. I find a lot of inspiration in Inktober just because of the materials that are allowed to me to use. Um, and some of you guys might not get the inspiration from your materials or from anything else. Um, I also, as you can see, I love colored paper. I'm always using it. Um, this is something that I started up very recently. Um, if you looked at my art from a year ago, you'd see no color to my paper. Um, but yeah, I find a lot of inspiration in that. Just choosing, like, you get an idea in your head and then you're like, what paper would be perfect to execute this idea? And sometimes you don't always choose right, but I think no matter what, the color of the paper always adds to the character. Like, um, the Zelda piece, um, I used a blue paper, I believe, and that just kind of made everything have this nice kind of blue tone, it made it kind of look a little somber, which is what I was going for, because of course, it's Zelda after, um, returning the Master Sword and kind of praying and receiving her power from the gods, of course, um, Breath of the Wild stuff. Um, but yeah. Oh, um, there's also, you gotta get inspired by the stuff around you. 
Um, as you see, the last two pieces for this week were a bit quicker. Um, we've got a teapot and a teacup and a skeleton child thing. Of course, it's, um, it's kind of based off of an adult skeleton, but he ended up with a really small body, so he looks very childlike. I don't hate it, but I know it's not anatomically correct for how a skeleton should look, but it was fun to do anyways, so I'll forgive myself for just that. Um, <laughs> but yeah, um, the teacup was actually inspired by something I just bought. Um, I got a little teapot and a teacup from a con, and they are so cute. I love them so much. Um, I've been trying to look for loose tea um, leaves, and it's been quite the difficult adventure to use in this teapot, because that's what it's meant for. It's meant for using loose tea leaves and pouring hot water in it, and then you can pour yourself a cup of tea. And it's just adorable, and I love like the shape of that, so I had to draw it. And of course, um, still lifes can be very helpful. Um, I would never tell you not to do a still life. I think you should always do still lives. Still lives help you know how to draw something um, and how to kind of set it in space. Um, as, you, as you're going to see with next week's video, I draw a giant pumpkin. I was hoping it wouldn't take as long as it did. And it took forever. And my hand was cramping up and I was cursing myself. So I was like, why did I choose to do this? <laughs> this is horrible. I think the pumpkin was the most fun of that part of that piece, and then everything else was just dreadful. Just like the Zelda piece. I used the same exact pens. I should have learned my lesson on the Zelda piece. Don't use these pens to cover large areas. I did not learn my lesson. <laughs> but, yeah, um, just don't forget when you're doing a challenge or just drawing it or whatever inspiration should be all around you um if you decorate anywhere i mean everyone should be decorating um their homes you like something you buy it right and you put it in your room you like poster you slap it on your wall get inspired by the stuff around you that would that just will really help you with coming up with inspiration and there's no shame and just doing a still life for every day of Inktober. There's nothing wrong with that. That's actually amazing practice. You're getting really good practice in with Inktober. Um, you could do like a figure sketch a day during Inktober. And that would be fine. You don't have to do something amazing and complete for every single day of Inktober. If you know what I'm saying? Um, really what it's kind of become in my eyes is something that you should really just take and kind of fit it to your own needs um and that's what i try and do and that's what i think anyone who's going to go about inktober in the future should do uh and yeah that's my advice i would say on this subject uh i really enjoyed most of the work this week Sadly, I must say, I did not like that Zelda piece. I really liked the sketch for my piece um, for the sixth day of this week, too. The one on the brown paper. I liked the sketch for that. That was fun. And then I colored it, and it all went wrong. <laughs> so, don't. That's another thing. You gotta do something new each day. So, if one day ends up not to your liking you got 31 other days to or you got 30 other days to try and do other things that you like you just got to put that behind you and move on um so yeah that's kind of just my advice um i hope you enjoyed hearing me talk for a little bit um to anyone who's new to my channel and is watching this video hi um i know i have a lot of influx of traffic to my channel recently um, I'm really excited about that, so thank you for checking it out. Um, yeah, so I'll see you guys in the next video, which may or may not be week four of Inktober. It may be something else. I have tons of stuff to post because I hadn't posted for weeks, so I'm really behind. 
So I'm going to go get back to work. So I'm going to see you guys later. Bye.